Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing some five minute. I have Dark Passenger as an opponent. He's an international master from the US. Decent chance I know who this is, but they're anonymous. Okay, he's played an early d5. Should I just take that? I think I'll just take. And then I'll play d4. And try to seize the center. That's what we'll do. He's going to go in for a uh, Grunfeld type position by fianchettoing his bishop. Solid. I'm going to put my bishop on e2 and castle short. I think it's a little bit better on e2 than it is on uh, d3. Because it breaks any potential pin. Also, I, it, it's harder to be bothered on e2 compared to d3. I anticipate eventually these pawns will get exchanged. So um, I, I wouldn't want to have to worry about knight b4 unnecessarily. Although now I kind of wish the bishop was on d3, given that he's played that move. Let's go... Hmm. Let's go queen a4. And if bishop a6, or bishop b7, I might play bishop a6. I just might. No, I'll probably play rook fd1 first. Yeah, rook fd1 seems sensible. He could take on d4 now, and if I take with my c pawn, play knight a5. Looks okay. Hmm. Plays queen c8 instead. I wonder now if it's actually decent for me to take on c5. It's an unusual decision. There might be something to be said for that. Hmm. Let's give it a shot. He has a choice. He can take on c3 or he can take back. He could also try to move this knight away. Sometimes they do that in Grunfeld positions. Like if white takes on c5, they'll try to move this knight and uh, gain compensation. Okay, against this, I'm going to go... I'm going to go rook b1 and keep an eye on this. I'm not worried about him taking my pawn because I think I have queen b3, which would fork his two bishops on b7 and c3. And if he goes bishop b4, then I can play a3. And I think I'm winning material in that case, I'm winning a piece. So I don't even see any direct threats that I have here, but uh, my two rooks down the b and d files make this a somewhat uncomfortable position. And the fact that his rook can't go to b8 because my bishop is here. I'm curious how he'll get out of this, or if it's possible to solve his problems immediately. I think he'll have to be very careful. He could play pawn e5 in order to try to attack my dark square bishop, but that might be just kind of a weakening move. I'll just drop this guy back. One idea I have now is to go knight d2 and bring my knight to c4. That would be a nice square for my knight. Queen c7, that's that's smart. But now I can go here, right? And I'm double attacking b7 and c5. Yeah, let's do that. And if he goes knight a5, I have rook d7. And I think I can pick up two minor pieces for the rook. So I would bet he plays rook b8 in this position, probably rook a b8. And then he'll let me take c5 and, and maybe play, play like rook fc8. Try to gain compensation. So this is a nice situation. Up over a minute and looks like we're winning a pawn. I think he has to play rook a b8. I mean, knight a5 is the only other move that makes sense. Okay, well, there's that one, but I have rook d7, right? Let's just double check. So rook d7, um, his queen will go somewhere. Oh, maybe a6 is his idea. No, I don't really care about that, though, do I? I can also just take on d8 directly. Take on d8, then take on b7. Is that better? Hmm. 
take on d8. Let's say he takes with this rook. I take on b7. Huh. Somehow I trust rook d7 a little more. So I'm going to go with that. I think the other move works too, but let's just do this one. I just see he can play pawn a6 is the only thing. And if he does that, I take c7, he takes b5. I'm not winning a piece or anything, or material. Okay, well, he's just letting me do the... Ooh. Okay. No, this is fine. Yeah, okay, I'm just going to do this. And I bet he plays a rook to b8. No, he doesn't. Wow. I was expecting a rook to b8 in order to um, just give him a check. In order to try to use the b file. But he didn't want to do that. Let's just bring our king over. This is a really nice position. Maybe I'll just go rook down. See if he'll take me and let me fix my pawn structure a bit. Still doing well on time, so no reason for us to play this in a hurried manner or anything. Go a4, rook b5. I'm just trying to get him to take me so I can take with my bishop and plug the b file. He should try to open the diagonal for this bishop. Like f5 would, would probably be his best bet. Yep, he heard me. <laughs> hmm. I think I can just do this. It's all right. F4, yeah, he's going to... Try to win the c3 pawn. Knight b6. Can I do that? Yeah. I'm covering b8 with my bishop, so I, I expect rook a5. Uh huh. Does that instead. I think I can just take, right? Take bishop d4, bishop g3. Yeah. Or is bishop d6 better? I think let's go with bishop d6. I like that a little more. Let's take this guy. Just got to hustle on the clock. He'll play bishop d4 and I'll go f3. I don't want to squander my time advantage. This is a, just winning, but I got to advance my a pawn now. That's what I need to do. Let's just try to trade these bishops. He can't avoid this swap. Just push. I'll bring my rook in, or my bishop into c8. Now I'm always, always, always Time threatening morning. something. Um, let's just go here. Check. I'm not playing this in the best way, but it should be good enough. Check. 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 
You stay hold. Check. Yeah. Okay, that was really sloppy at the end, but I still got the win. Just flagged him. Uh, should have been much, much easier. Let's go back. So, this variation transposed into a Grunfeld. I was talking about the placement of White's Light Square Bishop. I was pretty certain e2 is the best square, but um, maybe d3 isn't as bad as I thought. I think it's just good to like hedge against bishop g4. Um, also, I feel if there's a capture, it's nice not having to worry about knight b4 if I retake with the c-pawn. So knight b4 would hit a bishop that I have on d3 potentially. This looks a lot like my game with um, Chess Explained the other day, Kristoff, when we played our dual commentary match. So he played a setup with b6 as well. In that game, I had my bishop on d3, and I went for um, a plan of pawn e4 if I could. But this is an interesting decision, taking on c5. I like the way it turned out. It turned out excellent. I kind of wonder if he should play bishop takes c3, or, as I was saying, a lot of times in these Grunfeld-type positions, black will just wind up sacrificing a pawn. So knight a5, and encouraging me to do something like this, and arguing that... Although white's up a pawn, black has good play down the C, um, the A and C files, and potentially this pawn on C3 will be lost in the long run. That might be an optimistic way of assessing it, but it's something for him to consider in this position. I'm guessing he doesn't quite have enough compensation in this exact position, but I'm curious what the engine will say he should do. Okay, knight d8. So the engine is also saying black should give up a pawn. Although knight d8, I guess, is if I take, he takes discovered attack on my queen. Queen b3, and maybe he can win this pawn soon? I don't know. I think it's not going to like what he did, though. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. This simple capture b takes c5, and already black's in significant trouble. Rook a, b1. So I did that. One line I was mentioning is that if he gets greedy and grabs this pawn, well, he's got two loose pieces now, his bishop on b7 and the bishop on c3, and I can double attack them with this move. Um, then his only way to avoid losing something is bishop b4, and I was just planning a3, trying to force this bishop to move to a5 so I can take on b7. Then again, like I think his only move to avoid losing something is knight a5, but I go queen b2, and his bishop's trapped. Unless he has something funky with bishop takes f3, but I don't think that changes anything. If bishop takes f3, I could even just take with the pawn. It's fine. His bishop has nowhere to go. So, the tactics favor white. I wasn't going to waste time defending the c3 pawn if I could avoid it. So he did e5. It's a tough position. I'm not sure what advice to offer him because he, he has a hard time moving. This bishop on b7 is a big headache. If he tries to play something like rook d8, I can take, check, take, come in with a check. queen, and then here. And I sort of assumed I would have something in this position, like maybe just bishop h6 or something like that. I mean, maybe he could attempt to defend in some capacity. Yeah, I mean, at the very least, check. say check in here, maybe a move like knight e5. Keep an eye on f7. Knight d7 might be an issue. Pretty sure this is not good for him. So he played e5 instead. I dropped the bishop back. And then ended up winning the c5 pawn. I thought he was going to play rook a b8. And just pitch the c5 pawn and then maybe go here and try to resist. Put a lot of stuff on the c file to oppose my, my pass pawn. I didn't think knight d8 was that great. Let's check. Bishop c8, it says. Still doesn't like black's position. Yeah, rook d7. I thought rook takes d8 was also possible. I see the engine doesn't mind that either. I just didn't want to give his rook a tempo to come over here. Because I'm, I'm moderately worried that after this series of exchanges, he could do something like this. And even though white's up a little bit, I have two minor pieces against his rook. 
I could foresee this being somewhat tricky because he has the B file. My minor pieces are um, grouped in in the center and on the king side. So he might be able to get his rook into b2 and attack my weak pawns. So there's that aspect to think about. So I did the rook d7 move instead. I thought he would play a6 here. I'm actually kind of curious what the best approach is for me after a6. Because the point is, if I go queen a4, now I don't have as much stuff hitting the bishop on b7. So he can, he can probably defend like maybe queen c6 or queen c8 even. Might not be that bad for him. So if a6, ah, queen takes b7. Yeah, I didn't think about that. In retrospect, that should have been obvious, but <laughs> queen takes b7. I was only thinking about stuff like this and then yeah, going after his pawns. He's got a bunch of pawns on the fifth rank I can take. But yeah, rook... Queen takes b7 seems even stronger. Hmm. Queen takes, rook takes. This is like the game. Similar. So he just let me win the two pieces, the two minor pieces. I think black's only chance here is to try to activate his rooks right away. I don't think he should waste time playing f6. I think he's got to oppose me on the b file. So whether it's rook ab8 or rook fb8. If he's super worried about losing the a pawn, he can play rook fb8. It's fine. But um, let's say like yeah. this happens. This is the scenario I was talking about. Like white's probably winning, but it's not completely clear yet. Because I gotta I gotta deal with my back rank. And if he can win the a or the c pawns, it's it's an open question whether white's winning or even better. So I think he has to do this. I probably would have played something like h4. And then let's say he inserts check. a check just to push my king away and then comes back to b2. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I can go here. He can go after the c pawn. Maybe I take e5, hitting f7. Yeah, it's probably still fairly easily winning for white. But this, this looks more tenacious to me. He has more counterplay this way. Because in the game, his um, his rooks didn't get into my position. He gave me an extra tempo or two. F6 yeah. was kind of slow, and I was able to bring my king over and block the, the B file. So let's just check that moment, see what the computer thinks. Yeah, computer says rook fb8. And it does mention that I could do the same thing I did in the game. I forgot about that. I could play rook b3 here, so that after a possible trade, I'm blocking the file making it harder for him to utilize the b-file. Yeah, that looks like the cleanest way. Okay. So when he played f6 in the game, Check. I'm going to skip ahead because I'm pretty happy with the way I played this portion. He does win the c-pawn, but we've got everything blockaded. Yeah, this is this is all fine. I don't think I ever let slip any of my advantage. Yeah, now the A-pawn's on a runaway, runaway track. I should have been able to find some easier way to win here. We're both getting low on time, 30 seconds each, roughly. I was just trying to prevent counterplay. Maybe I was a bit too focused on that. Although nothing I did, I don't think, ever lets the win slip until the very end. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I missed some real easy wins right at the end. Like, let's take this position right here. He's just played rook a2. I went in with my king. Is that really necessary for me to do that? Probably not. I mean, something like just e7, king here, and then let's say knight check. b6, check, take, and then a7. That should be winning, because if he takes, I get this check. check in, and I go win his rook. I've still got two pawns remaining, so I won't have to do king, bishop, and knight versus king. <laughs> Thank god. <laughs> just kidding, I know how to do that checkmate. So, yeah. It was just a, a timed situation at this point. What happened? I think in the final position, he's uh, possibly check. even drawing. Because I managed to lose all my pawns. Check. A queen, but like, I guess I really could have um, tried to.
try to get a, a king bishop and knight versus king endgame. Sure. Maybe if I had more time, I would have done that. Test myself. Yeah. Okay. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that game. That was an interesting one. And please leave me any feedback in the comments. Thanks, guys. Talk to you later.